Yes, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Dear fellow worshipers of our Savior God, as we watch him ride into Jerusalem for you and for me and for all who need his salvation. Dear friends, it's so nice to see so many children in our worship together with us this morning. Did you know that one of the most important jobs that Christian parents have is to train their children how to worship and praise God? That begins by bringing them to church on a regular basis, hopefully a weekly basis. It's also important that we train them the proper posture in worship, when to stand and when to sit, to fold their hands and bow their heads when we're praying. It's also our joy and privilege to help them follow along as we, we sing the songs of the liturgy and respond to the verses the pastors read. It's also important that we help them to learn to sing those hymns, pointing out the words as well as the music or, or, or maybe sometimes that's the children's job helping us as parents. I know that in speaking with young parents, they often say they are kept so busy during the church service that they don't get much out of it. And yet that work of training children in worship is indispensable as you parents begin to train the next generation of those who are going to lead us in worship. But let's not be mistaken. Worship and praise doesn't happen just here in a building like this. Worship and praise of our God also happens outside in our daily lives wherever God has placed us in this world. And that's what we want to talk about this morning based on the events of that first Palm Sunday. As we look again at what happened on that day, may the Holy Spirit not only bring joy to our hearts, but move us to raise our hands in praise of that Savior. Martin Luther once said that the greatest praise that we can give to God is when we believe his word and that's true in fact we, we know what that's all about because one of the highest compliments that we can give to one of our friends or another person is you know I can trust your word as we look at the events of that first Palm Sunday we are given a visible demonstration of how we and why we can trust God's word. You see, things on Palm Sunday didn't happen by accident. Centuries before, God had prophesied through his prophet Zechariah all that was going to happen on that Palm Sunday from Jesus riding in on a donkey and people singing their praises and their songs of Hosanna to the Son of David. That's the way it is with God's word. You can trust everything he says. And when by the power of his Holy Spirit, God creates faith in our hearts to believe in our Savior God, he gives us the faith by which we honor and praise him. That's so important. But as Pastor Tom Hayes said in the introduction to that one lesson, faith doesn't stay in the heart. Faith also becomes evident by the things that we do with our hands. And the first thing that we notice on that first Palm Sunday is how so many raise their hands in praise of God by their obedience. Look at the disciples. As they were approaching Jerusalem, Jesus sent several of them ahead to a village and told them that there they would find a colt that was tied up and they were to untie it and bring it to him. And if anyone should object, why are you untying that colt? You simply tell them the Lord needs it, and they'll send it right with you. And that's exactly what happened. The disciples went to the village, and there it was, a colt tied up. And they began to untie it without raising any questions. 
And then when the owner said, why are you untying that colt? They responded, the Lord has need of it. And they obeyed and they let that colt be taken away. Isn't that amazing? That's the way it is with God. That when he moves our heart to faith, he also will empower our hands to obey. And when we obey the promises of God, then our hearts will be leading our hands and give our hands strength to do the same. And so as, as, as we gather here this morning, did you notice how we're doing that? In a way, you could say that, that we have brought our hands of praise as we open the scriptures, as, as we open the songs of praise that we sing. And you can do that every day of your life. Use your hands to open God's word daily or a meditation or devotion booklet, or just download one of the meditations or devotions from the computer. Yes, we want hands of obedience too, but therein lies the problem. Sometimes when we fail to trust God's word, then there might be acts of disobedience from our hands. For example, we might wonder and question Why is God allowing such difficult things and hurtful things to come into my life if he loves me? If God doesn't love me and send better things in life, then why should I love him? Or we might wonder, God said he was going to hear and answer all of our prayers, and it seems like he just simply is not listening, and we might then begin to wonder, well, if God is not going to hear and answer my prayers, why do I waste the time praying? Or someone's hurt us. And God has told us in his word, forgive one another just as in Christ God forgave you. And then we begin to wonder, well, God is perfect. He can do that. But God, you don't know how he hurt me or she hurt me. And and Lord, I don't know if I can do that. Yes, unfortunately, even though we want to offer up God our hands of obedience and praise many times, Our hearts lead us to disobedience. But that's why the events of Palm Sunday are so important and so comforting to us. You see, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he knew what was waiting for him at the end of the week. And look, he didn't turn and run. He perfectly trusted his Father's word and perfectly obeyed his Father's will. And on the cross, he offered up that perfect sacrifice that washes away all of our sins. By his perfect obedience, he has won salvation for us that we need it because of our disobedience. It's good news that moves our hearts to joy and praise of God in believing that what Jesus did, he did for me. But it's also our joyful faith that moves our hands that we offer a praise by our obedience. But as you look at the Palm Sunday account, there weren't not only hands of obedience, there were also hands of generosity. Look at the generous things that people did. An owner allows his unused colt to be used by the Lord. People were generous with their coats as they placed them on the donkey on which Jesus would ride, and when they threw their coats in the pathway across which Jesus could ride. And then many cut down palm branches and generously raised them with songs of praise, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. On that Palm Sunday, the people praised God with generous hands. And so it is for us. That's part of our praise to God too when we are people of God with generous hands. That's always been the case with God's believing children. Think of the wise men. When they came to worship the Christ child, they generously laid before him their treasures of gold and incense and myrrh. And we think of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, his good friends, How so often they generously opened their home to Jesus for his visits and for his food and for his rest. 
And then we think of Mary, how, how she anointed Jesus with, with expensive perfume, anointing his body for his burial. And then we have to think of Nicodemus. If you catch it, you pay attention. He generously bought grave clothes for Jesus because Jesus had none. And someone somehow generously let Jesus be laid in a grave. You see, God's people are moved to generosity when they see the generosity that Jesus offered by dying on the cross. And we also think then of the generous people at St. Paul who regularly and generously bring offerings to honor the Lord, money, income that they earned with the work of their own hands. But the greatest treasures that Jesus wants us to lay at his feet are the souls that are brought to faith through the gospel work that we do. Yes, the Holy Spirit is the one who finally brings people to faith, but the Holy Spirit uses people like you to connect others to the word so that they too can be brought to faith and praise Jesus. And think of how we use our hands to do that. Simply extending a welcoming hand. Why don't you come and learn about the Savior in a Bible information class? Or why don't you come and hear about Jesus in our worship service? Or when we fold our hands in prayer and we pray the Lord's Prayer, Your Kingdom Come, those praying hands are generously asking that God would see to it that his word is proclaimed in its truth and purity and that more people are brought to faith through the work of the Holy Spirit. Or, 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 think, of, or think of the times when we extend it, a helping hand to those who needed it. And they learn from us that God's people not only love God, but they also love their neighbor. Yes, if Jesus stretched out his, uh, his hands on the cross to save all people, then it is our joy and our privilege to extend our hands to welcome others to know the Savior, no matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice of time, no matter the amount of energy that it takes. Hands of generosity. One of the great joys that we have when we gather in God's house, like on a day today, like today, and one of the great beauties of a worship service like this is when we see and hear our children singing praises to God. There's nothing more beautiful than that. And in many ways, those children are very generous in their energy and in their volume as they sing praises to Jesus. And yet, as beautiful as that is, one day there's going to be something even more beautiful when we, with our children and the choirs of angels, sing praise to God in heaven above. And our Savior deserves that praise, not only here, but also in heaven. But do you remember what John saw in that vision of heaven? God's people will not only join the angels in singing praises to Jesus. Did you ever notice what we will be holding in our hands? We will be holding palm branches. May God bless your Palm Sunday celebration, and may God bless you as you walk with your Savior throughout this holy week. Amen. Please stand.